through and do in this problem is figure out the amount of work done to, to push this block across the floor. Uh, now, what we're gonna actually do is push on the block forward with a force of 30 newtons. Now this block is sitting on the ground uh, and there's, there's friction on the ground. It has a coefficient of friction. In this case, that coefficient is kinetic friction. Uh, and so what we're gonna go through and do is, is not just work out the work only by this push force, but we're actually gonna work out the total work done on the block or the, the net work. You could even go so far as to say it's the sum of all works done on the block. So realize any, any work done is done by forces. So what we need to do in this problem is look at all of the forces that are gonna act on this block. And of course that means drawing a free body diagram. So on this free body diagram, we actually have not just the push force forward, but we also have the normal force, gravity, and the friction force. Now I'm not gonna get into where these forces come from uh, and how to calculate these. That's going back to the last unit uh, when we were talking about force. Uh, so these values we're just gonna take. All right, so the total work done in this case is not just gonna be the work done by the push force, it's actually gonna be the work done by all four of these forces. And I don't wanna get into where these forces come from. That has to deal with force and, and looking at force problems, which is not what this is about. So in finding our network, we're actually gonna be looking at the work by each individual force. So that means we're gonna have the work by the push force, plus the work by friction, plus the work by the normal force, plus the work by gravity. The sum of these four works is gonna be the total work done on the block. So let's start with the push force. To calculate the, the work done by the push force, of course we need an equation for work. And remember work is equal to FD cosine theta. So in this case, we have a push force forward, that's our force. And we're gonna let this block move forward some distance. So let's let this move forward through a displacement of how about 10 meters. So in this, as this block is pushed forward 10 meters, we wanna know the total work done by each of these forces. So starting here, the work by the push force is the force, that's 30 newtons, times the displacement, that's 10 meters, times the cosine of the angle between them. Now realize if this block moves horizontally forward 10 meters and the push force is horizontal and forward, the angle between the force and the displacement is zero. So work this out, you're gonna get 300 newtons times meters. Now, we don't actually refer to work as newton meters. What we call them are joules. We'll just use the letter J for joules. A joule is nothing other than a newton meter. Uh, looking at friction, we have a similar story. The work by friction is 19.6 times 10 times the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement. Now realize the displacement is forward, but the force is backward. So there's 180 degrees between the two. That means the total work done by friction is going to be negative 196 joules. It's negative because these forces are in opposite directions. Moving on to the normal force. The normal force has a magnitude of 98 newtons. The displacement is 10 meters. Now, in this case, because this is on a horizontal surface, the normal force is straight up, but the displacement is horizontal. That means the angle between the two is 90. That means the normal force does no work in this problem. And again, we see a similar issue with gravity. Gravity straight down. So gravity is going to do no work. So if we want to go through and look at these four works and add them up to get the total work, it means the sum of all works done on the block is going to be simply the sum of these four works. This leaves us with a total work, or a sum of all works, or a network, whatever you want to call it, of 104 joules.
Now, what good is this? Uh, we'll get to that once we start talking about kinetic and potential energy and the work energy theorem. I'll show you exactly what we can do with this. Right now, we're just trying to figure out the work um, in a little bit in the next couple of problems. Then we'll actually see how this is useful so that we can find things like how fast the block is moving after it's been pushed 10 meters forward. But for the moment being, that's all for now.